Hey everyone and welcome back. As more and more people start shooting with a digital camera, a lot more people are finding themselves with raw images and they're not quite sure what to do with them. Well, part of Photoshop comes Camera Raw, which allows you to edit those raw images and bring back some of the data that you just couldn't do with JPEGs. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how Camera Raw works and how you can use it to drastically improve your images. So here I have an image that was shot on my Canon DSLR. And if I select the image and press the space bar, we can see that it didn't come out exactly how I would hope it came out. But with Camera Raw, I can bring back some of the data that I didn't even know was there. So with this image selected, I'm gonna simply drag it right into Photoshop. And when I do that, Camera Raw is gonna open up automatically. And here's where all the magic happens. Over to the right, we have our basic section, which contains a lot of adjustments that you may have heard and may have even played with in the past. But it's really a good idea to take a look at the histogram at the top. Right now I'm seeing that there's missing a lot of highlights, which is on this area here. So we can start by increasing the exposure, which brings back some of the light that we didn't get initially when we took the picture. And that's already looking a lot better. We also have the highlight slider, which I found when you're dealing with a sky, decreasing the highlights can actually help bring out some of the blues and tone down on some of the harsh highlights that you might find in some of the clouds. Now the shadow slider, if you have dark areas of your photo, like this mountain here, isn't as bright as I would like. So if I increase the shadow slider, we now see the light coming back into that mountain. And then we can go through and fine tune. One thing I like doing is increasing the contrast to give a little bit more sharpness to the image. And then down here we have the clarity slider, which essentially increases the contrast of the midtones. And that can really work well if you're dealing with a lot of textures like mountains or stone. Now the vibrance slider, we have vibrance and saturation. The difference between the two, there's a technical difference, but essentially the vibrance slider increases the saturation on blues and greens, but it doesn't increase the saturation as much on oranges and yellows, which typically are in skin tones. So if I crank up the vibrance, you're gonna notice that the blues get a lot more vivid, but the mountain kind of stays the same. And if I undo that and now I increase the saturation, you'll notice that the mountain is now affected a lot more. But in this case, I'm not too fond of that color. So I'm gonna actually go with vibrance. I'm gonna increase that and the blues are looking a lot nicer. Now up at the top, I can turn preview off. That's what we started with. And now that's what we have now. So with a few simple sliders, we've already drastically improved the look of this image but there's still a lot we can do. Let me go ahead and zoom into this image here. You're gonna notice that when you start to bring back information that wasn't there initially, you're gonna to start to get a lot of noise. I'm not sure if you can see this in the video, but there is noise. If I hop over to the detail tab right here, down here we have the luminance noise reduction. If I increase this, you may not be able to see this in the video, but a lot of the noise has just vanished. And if I turn the preview off, and then on, you might be able to see that, a lot of the noise has now disappeared. So again, when you're bringing back data, you're bringing back highlights and shadows and all that stuff, you're going to get a lot of noise. That's what the noise reduction feature is there for. Now in addition to that, let me go ahead and zoom out. We also have some other tools up at the top. We have right here, we have the spot removal tool, which you may have seen in Photoshop. We have red eye removal, which wouldn't come into play in this photo. And we have an adjustment brush, which is really cool. This allows us to paint in selective adjustments. So before, when I increased the vibrance and not the saturation, these clouds over here didn't really get affected. I wanna really bring out the yellows here. But if I were to increase the saturation, then the mountain would look ugly. However, with the adjustment brush, I can now paint in those adjustments. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reset these sliders by simply double clicking on each of them, just like this. And then I can start painting in, just like this. You might not see much right now, but once you paint in, and if you hover your mouse over top of the point, you can see what was painted. Now I can go ahead and increase the saturation, and you'll see those clouds now get a lot more vivid. I can turn down the highlights a little bit, increase the clarity, and we have much nicer looking clouds now. And this adjustment brush can be used pretty much anywhere. So if I take a look at this image and I think the mountain isn't bright enough, I can actually make a new adjustment brush just like this, and I can start painting on the mountain. And right now you're not probably seeing much, you're seeing a little bit more saturation than I would like, but I can go over here, I can turn down the saturation. Now I can increase the exposure to get more light in the mountain, just like this. I can turn up the highlights, turn up the shadows, and now we have a much brighter mountain and I can continue painting to fill in the whole mountain just like this. And if I turn off preview and then turn on preview, you can see the difference that the adjustment brush has made, which is fantastic. 
So one more time, here's what we started with, which was a very dark image. Most people would say, oh, this is garbage, I'm just gonna delete it. And if we switch back over to Photoshop, here's what we have now, all done within just a few minutes in Camera Raw. And when you're ready to open it, you can press the Open Image button, or if you hold down your Shift key, you can open it as a smart object so you can go back and edit that later on. And this is just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with Camera Raw. There's so much more within Camera Raw that you're gonna learn in other courses and other videos, but this will hopefully get you started with bringing your images into Camera Raw and bringing back some of the data that you didn't even know existed. So hopefully that helped you guys out and we'll see you in the next video.